Okay, dimensioning variables. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot that's new. Uh, there's a lot that's new. Uh, dimension variables. As with anything else, there are variables. There are definitely variables. So now, once a dimension string is placed, you have several options to customize the string, the dimension values, and the witness lines. The witness lines. Mm. Witness. Silent witness. Ugh. Excuse me. I want to get ergonomically aligned in my workstation. Oh, I can use shiatsu. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh. oh. There we go. Much better. Okay. Dimensioning. Dimension. Variables. <laughs> and to do it without suffering from nature, right? suffering from dementia. Use it or lose it. Once a dimension string has been placed, you have several options to customize the string. The dimension values in the witness lines, the line work that makes up the dimension. In this figure that is to my left, your right, you can see a typical aligned dimension string that has been selected after placement. Let's take a look at each of the available controls. Let's take a look at this. So there's one. A dimension string that's been selected. Dimension, dimension value grip. To adjust the position of any of the dimension values, especially for shorter dimension strings where the value might overlap the witness lines, click and drag the dimension value grip to relocate the text. Well, first of all, let's talk about what, a, 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 what each of these things are. Let's break it down a little bit. We have dimension value grip. Extension line grip, witness line grip, dimension value constraint, dimension equality toggle. Dimension equality toggle. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Well, I'll get into that later. Well, the dimension value grip is exactly that. The dimension value grip, right? We, what I showed you, we can do something like that with it. In this instance, it might be prudent. Do something like that. So you can discern the difference between the two. <laughs> now, the difference between the two. Dimension value grip. To adjust the position of any of the dimension values, especially for shorter dimension strings where the value might overlap the witness lines, click and drag the dimension value grip to really relocate the text. Well, the witness line. The witness line, for lack of a better term, is the um, in the the AutoCAD realm the dimension line? Where do you err? Do you err on the side of this side or that side? You know, you and your witnesses, your, your entourage. <laughs> lots of lots of entourages in these models. They err on either side of the witness line. I swear to you, I'm telling you as a witness, I saw him do it, and he he did. He did do it. I'll swear to it. She'll lie, and he'll swear to it. <laughs> I'm sorry. But again, life imitates art, and vice versa. Okay, so that is the witness line, right? That's the witness line. So, uh, you, can grab, you can grab that grip with your mouse, and you can get it out of the way so that it doesn't, so that it's, it's not too busy. Not too busy. Uh, now, uh, just a quick note. I don't think I've ever said to anybody, the software can't do that. Lots of folks do. It's easy that way. It's, it's the software just won't do that. For example, someone that critiques the strongs may say, you know what, I like the fact that that, that, dim that dimension is indeed pulled apart from that dimension string. But you know what, I don't like the arc. I'd like to see it at a right angle. I could easily say, I'm sorry, the software doesn't do that. But with co the coding parameters that you can visually utilize, you can <laughs> alter and augment the software so you have that availability to bring this out in a line, a linear right angle. And if you can't, maybe they'll find someone that can, right? On that little, little preference alone. If you claim to know how to do it, you uh, better know. Someone may call you on it, right? 
and hopefully they don't call me on it. Because I'm not 100 percent sure I know how to do it. I have to find a solution, and it could very well be uh, I get a time frame that I have to find it. And and if I can't conform to the time frame which was allotted to me to find the solution for that particular preference, well then guess what? Down the road again, and they go right back into their office, and they have fun at my expense, and I'm down the road eating food out of a garbage can. But I digress. That's the dimension value, correct? The leader settings associated with dimension values are found in the dimension type properties. If you need to reset the position of the dimension value, right click the dimension string and select reset dimension text position from the context menu. And by reading that following passage, I don't think I'm getting the check. <laughs> Someone else is. <laughs> okay, so let me pat myself on the back. I'll figure that out too. Extension line grip. The predefined distance that separates the dimensioned object from the beginning of the extension line is specified in the dimension type properties as witness line gap to element. So in the properties of this dimension, it's, uh, um, it's denoted or it's valued as witness line gap to element. Witness line gap to element is a sixteenth of an inch offset from origin. Right? Well, no, not necessarily. Witness line gap to element. That is a, it's a sixteenth witness line gap to element. It's the offset origin. Uh, that's what that is. It's the offset origin. This distance right here. I can't zoom in because I'm in the dialog box. But it's this distance. Extension line grip. I'm almost positive. Yeah, I'm pretty positive. Because let's see. It's set to be a sixteenth of an inch. Let's set it to be 0.125 inches. And let's hit apply and watch that dimension line. You see? It doubled, right? <laughs> I'm smart. Not like everybody says. I'm smart. I can handle things. Anyway, it's, it's like the movies. It's like we're living in a movie. I wonder who's watching me now. Who? The IRS. All right, now, yeah, so that uh, gets us that far. However, you may need to manually adjust the extension line in some circumstances. Click and drag the extension line grip, and you will also notice that the grip will snap into place near the predefined distance if you need to return the extension line to its original gap distance. So again, this is the dimension line, this is an extension line, this is a tick mark, and this is uh, dimension line above extension line, extend dimension line, extend extension line above dimension line, right? That's this distance here in AutoCAD speak. If I was to grab it again, I could grab this and bring it up as far as I want, right? And I can bring it back down and it says it's going to snap. Huh. Right there. It does. You can't see it, but it does. Or you can't feel it. It's almost like a feeling. You can almost feel it jump ahead of your mouse on a, a dynamic snap, for lack of a better term. Dynamic snap. Like lots of folks, they'll dynamically snap. Right to welfare. Dynamically. The apple won't fall too far from the tree. They'll dynamically snap to welfare. And it's $100 a week per person. So <laughs> you don't get hot food. <laughs> they dynamically snap to welfare. And whose fault is that? Huh? Free education. Whose fault? Mine? Anyway, let's not get into snap or wick. Let's not get into any of that yet. Soon, but not yet. That is a very powerful tool. Yeah, so it'll uh, uh, snap back to its original gap distance. Fall into the gap. Watch the gap. Now, the witness line grip, there's another one. The grip on each extension line that is closer to the dimension string is the witness line grip. Well, the witness line, as you can see, there's, there's two snap grips here, or at least I should say there's two little buttons or little uh, nodes, for lack of a better term. Hold on. I got an itchy head. I just shaved my head. Sometimes I don't put aftershave on, it gets a little itchy. All right, so, yeah, so if we were to drag to set the gap between the witness line and its reference, the tooltip will help us. Or, if you come up here, move witness line. The grip on each extension line that is closer to the dimension string is the witness line grip. This control allows you to move the witness line to a different entity. Click and drag this control to another object in the project, and the dimension string will 
great update. And that's fascinating. Unfortunately, though, we don't really have anything here. So why don't I do this? Why don't I just take a reference line? Right? Let's just take a reference line. Give me a line. Any line. Any line. Let's see if I'll get it. Let me see if I'll snap to that. So what I'm going to do is grab this grip. Bring this up a little bit. And let's see here. There's the witness line grip. Let's move it over here, and it snaps to it. Now watch what happens to the six-foot dimension. Watch what happens to the seven-foot, six dimension. I shouldn't say dimension. Dimension value. Nomenclature is important in this. It does the math. Thank God, because you know what? I'm not, a, I'm not a field foreman. They can add these numbers really fast in their head. I can't. Thank God for my computer. If it wasn't for my computer, I don't know what I'd do. Anyway. Don't begrudge us because we have the ability to utilize these tools to alleviate us from that bipolar disorder of foot infraction, foot inch fractions and least common denominator. You know what? You have the luxury of being there first in, last out. I have the luxury of being the first one in and never getting a chance to get out. <laughs> never getting out. Anyway, there's a term I heard years ago, someone told me. Electricians are the first ones in and the last ones out. Lots of people are the first ones in and last ones out. I can't talk about that. It's G37 classified. Now, that's the witness line grip. And there's lots of 12 angry men, right? On a jury. But again, wow, why is he talking in these weird, encoded, encrypted, cryptic messages? Why would he speak this way? There's a method to my madness. Dimension, value, constraint. How is he going to How is he going to be after he recovers? What's he going to be like after he recovers? If he recovers, she or she. Dimension value constraint. The lock symbol allows you to preserve a dimension value so that it cannot be changed unless the constraint is removed. We're going to coordinate from the top down. This functionality can be used to preserve dimension values for minimum widths of corridors, floor to floor heights, and other special features of your designs. As powerful as this feature is, and I told you this a long time ago, as powerful as this feature is, I've, I've been saying this since college. I, I, I even tried to instill this in the gammas. You know, even the gammas didn't get it. All the way back, back in university. And it still hasn't hit home. Back then, I was trying to instill this in the gammas. And the zets and the sexes and the campus, they just, they just so we're all asleep at the switch. Who knew, right? Who knew? Who knew? Obviously, neither of those fraternities and sororities had any clue. But then again, I am the alpha and the omega. Okay, no, I'm not. David Koresh is. Go hang out with him. Help Bob Comet. <laughs> All right, dimension value constraint. <laughs> dimension value constraint. Okay, so yeah, yeah, if, um, if indeed you have a hallway that is ADA compliant, and it usually is because you have to get a wheelchair into the social security office, you might want to lock the dimension so that if this uh, team member needs two feet for this duct bank or, or this uh, team member needs this shaft to enlarge because of the electrical riser conduits or the, the plumber decided he, he needs a little bit more for the wet wall, then indeed you will need to lock these or someone might rob from Paul to pay Mary. And we can't rob from Paul to pay Mary. Isn't that, or well, maybe we can. Uh, again, I don't know, every cop is a criminal uh, and all the sin is saints because heads is tails. Just call them Lucifer, because they're in need of some restraint. Where'd that come from? All right, anyway, this is why I tell you, let the master be your music. Let the music be your master. This is the Mastering Series, designed for those who want to become pros. Again, I know I'm a silly, silly putty guy, but again, when you, when you bend and you flex after a while, when you do come back down, or at least... Come back to a turn um, or some reverb, maybe a little silly, silly string, dimension strings. All right, so this video is going real long. How many beeps have we heard? Lots of beeps. Amco, double A, MCO. Okay, yeah, so yeah, it's very powerful, very powerful, very powerful. 
And uh, again, the reason I just went off on a tangent is because of the seriousness of the next couple of passages. The lock symbol allows you to preserve a dimension value so that it cannot be changed unless the constraint is removed. This functionality can be used to preserve dimension values for minimum widths of corridors, floor to floor heights, and other special features of your designs. As powerful as this feature is, you should use it only when absolutely necessary because an overly constrained model can create problems. And you may have difficulty, you may have difficulty unraveling. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. So, if I was to select this dimension string and lock this, because this is an ADA compliant hallway, right? You may find that this and this need to remain constrained. And this is very little tolerances. Very, very, maybe the standard deviation could be one two hundred and fifty sixth of an inch. It can't deviate from center too much. Or they can't get into the welfare office. They can't get into the social security office. They can't get into the hospital. They can't get into your apartment building because it's not ADA compliant. Have you ever been to a place and Google asks you if it's handicap accessible and you have a choice, yes, no, <laughs> or, or, or you don't know? Well, think about that. Kind of sort of the same thing. It wants to know. It helps because lots of people design facilities and they, they, they oops, we forgot about the senior citizens. We forgot about the uh, handicap. We forgot, we forgot about the mentally challenged. What they are real quick to do, though, is <laughs> call the cops on them. <laughs> they never forget to do that, right? In any event, uh, it's funny how things work in life because the next thing is this dimension equality toggle. You want to talk about um, what's going on in the streets of America and all over the world right now with a dimension equality toggle? Well, equality is a huge word, right? Equality. Well, put it this way. I'll leave it at this. That wall is eggshell white, and I may get black lung disease from smoking cigarettes. But that's about as far as it goes for me. I'm a big Gladys Knight and the Pips fan, <laughs> and I'm also a big Olivia Newton-John fan. So, uh, again... Beauty's only skin deep, and when we're talking about equality in today's world, um, they talk about equality a lot, don't they? It seems to be the topic of the day. So dimension and equ your equality toggle uh, carefully. Again, you folks, this message is for those folks that I'm trying to reach on the bully pulpits. Dimension your quality toggle switches responsibly so as to not instill another pogrom. The last thing we need at this particular time is any or any more pogroms, right? Pogroms. I know I sure as hell don't need another one. And again, I'm not going to blame my ancestors, but I'll bet you, uh, I bet you, my ancestors don't want you to instill any more pogrom policies. I didn't say program, I said pogrom, P-O-G-R-A-M. Again, I told you, I'm a, I study bugs, I'm an entomologist. All right, so, yeah, it's important, and it's also important being that we coordinate from the top down, right? So again, there's absolutely no reason why. <laughs> I went about three inches to the left before I remembered that the annotate tab was one, two, three, four, five, six tabs to the right. So let me just align this. And let's just go to here to here. And let's just go here and then lock it. So now, I can't, uh, as much as I want to, I can't change that dimension. I could move it up to the air handle unit in the, in the elevator machine room, but I can't change the distance between the floors. I can't. But I do know, if you notice, if you ever go to a courtroom, you notice that the, the, the judge is one step above the floor uh, where he sits or she sits. One step above. It's all it's as high as it goes. That's the difference. So I always said to myself, you know, what would stop you? If it was just you and I in the world, could your buddy protect you from me? 
if indeed we were administering justice. I used to think that sometimes when I was a younger man. Always thinking that oh, everyone needed a, a crutch or help. And could you uh, be, could you administer justice uh, in the distance that it separates us? And sometimes you see yourself, well, you know, that judge looks awfully old. I'm sure the distance <laughs> from his, his bodyguard couldn't protect him from me if I just get over the top of the bench, right? But I never would, God forbid, because I, I respect it. I respect the bench. That's the difference. I respect the bench. I respect authority. Because again, the only thing worse than authority is the absence of it. But there's not much separating us from animals, right? Some folks haven't reached the civilization yet, right? So, you know, toggle your dimension equality button responsibly, right? There's not much difference between the two. There's not much difference between the two. Um, and then in some cases there are seven degrees of difference. And those are the seven deadly sins. And uh, toggle your sins as well. Because some forgive, some don't. Some don't blame you for your mistakes, but they expect that you pay for them. Because things carry sentences, like this one. I'm sorry, I apologize if I offended anybody, but I mean no harm. I come in peace from uh, my re-entry program. I'm back from Mars. Rover's doing fine. Rover's doing fine.